Ritual Beasts right now are better than they have ever been before. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and I do not mean that previous statement in any sort of unironic or cheeky way. I literally mean what it said. Ritual Beasts have never been better. Objectively speaking, the deck has never been better than it is right now in terms of the new tools it has access to, the new support it got indirectly and directly, the new capabilities it has for decks to be built because of new draw cards, new unlimits of things like Ulti Kahnhawk going back to three, the deck ultimately is now better suited to at least be able to play the game than it has ever been before this point, ever since 2015. And even in 2015, the deck that was existing then is nowhere near as good as the deck now in terms of the objective way it can be approached and the objective way that it can be built and formed and piloted. So that is what I wanted to talk to you about today. Ritual Beasts is one of my favorite decks, like literally one of my favorites because it just does so much and I feel like it's very rewarding to play. You can also pick up the core for fairly cheap. Uh, there are certain other cards you have to pick up for the deck now, like Win the Wind Channeler, which is a new bit of support that literally searches almost every Ritual Beast card that makes the deck insanely better. There are also draw cards you can pick up, like Pot of Extravagance, that are a little bit more on the expensive side, but you do have other options, like Performer Pal Popper Up, that does have natural synergy with the deck, or something like Pot of Desires, that just changes the way you have to build your deck. All these sorts of things. There's multiple ways and multiple avenues you can approach it, and I think that it's one of those decks that if you're looking to improve at the game or just looking to have some fun, Ritual Beast is definitely one of those decks, and that's why it's one of my favorite decks. I think it's very, very rewarding to pilot. And so with Win coming out in Rise of the Duelist, making the deck a step above what it was before, a significant step up what it was before, I figured what better opportunity for me to go through and show you basically like a sort of com like entry level guide into like what everything that has changed about the deck since 2015 is so that if there's any returning players that really liked this deck in the past or if there are any new people that are interested in ritual beasts that have never seen these cards before can at least get some basic ideas of how the deck is meant to function and all that sort of stuff so with that out of the way i guess i just need to start showing you what i'm talking about first and foremost we need to talk about the most important piece of the new puzzle the fact that when the Wind Channeler is coming out in Rise of the Duelist. Now, if you've never seen this card before, this is what it does. You can discard this card and one Wind Monster, add one Wind Monster with 1,500 or less defense from your deck to your hand, except for Wind the Wind Medium. Also, you cannot activate monster effects for the rest of the turn, except for Wind Monsters. And then it has a second effect that's never relevant, but when your Wind Monster is destroyed by battle while this card is in your hand, you can special summon this card. You can only use each effect of Wind the Wind Medium once per turn. Basically, the first effect is what we're mainly focusing on here, and this is what is big and important about this card. This card can discard itself and any wind monster in your hand, so all of your Ritual Beast cards. It can search Elder, it can search Conahawk, it can search Rampangu, it can search Apaleo, it can search uh, Zephyrm Pilica. Like, it can search so many cards in the deck. It can search like every Ritual Beast name except for Winda, Petalfin, and Laura, if I'm remembering correctly. I uh, can't even remember what Zephyr Windy's stats are because that card doesn't matter in the context of a Ritual Beast deck. But so what this card allows is this card allows heightened consistency because it's a card that directly searches your best combo pieces. Your Elder, your Conahawk, your Rampangu. But because it also searches other things like Zephyr and Pilica and Apelio, it also has the capability of being an extender as well. It's not like a card that's going to be dead in your hand when you have opened Elder Conahawk or Elder Rampangu. It actually fundamentally improves all your combos that you opened but then if you didn't open the actual combo itself it gets you there because it is a consistency card it is literally a perfect card for this deck and it locks you to wind effects for the rest of the turn but that's literally your entire deck so it's not going to be something that's ever going to be restricting you in any way shape or form it literally only is there to benefit you and then the other factor of why i'm talking about ritual beasts Ulti Conahawk was just released from the most recent Forbidden Limited list. It is back to three. Card's been back at three for a while now. And when the card went back to three, I said that I thought it was going back to three so that they could justify importing Wind, the Wind Channeler. And I was just casually correct on that. But what this allows is it allows the deck to have access to cards that are new that we never had in 2015, like Pot of Extravagance. 
This is a consistency boosting card. This is a card that you could play at the start of your main phase one and draw two cards. One of the key issues that Ritual Beast has suffered with is the ability to get to its combo plays. But being able to play a card that is literally Pot of Greed is now very, very desirable. And you don't even have just this to contend with. You could play Pot of Desires instead of this. I personally think Pot of Extravagance is the better option because if you knew how to play Ritual Beast correctly, you never needed more than one ulti Kana Hawk anyway. Does it affect some of the combos? Yes, it affects specifically one combo that I'm going to show you in this video. But you only have a 4.4% chance of banishing all of your Kana Hawks or all of your Kimun Falcuses from your extra deck. And if you banish all your Kimun Falcuses, then you're still just playing old Ritual Beast combos. You just don't do the new combos. And if you banish all of your ulti Kana Hawks, like that's never going to happen in the, in the span of a wide tournament. Now you do have a 34% chance of banishing two of them. That's you know a significant chance. But like I said, if you knew how to play the deck correctly, you only needed one copy of ulti Kana Hawk in your extra deck anyway. And the combo that gets affected by Conahawk going back to three is still a good combo in its own right, even if you do extravagance away your two extra copies of Ulti Conahawk. So I think that with the addition of win and extravagance, the deck is more consistent than it has ever been before. Uh, and it is something you could definitely be playing like at locals, regional level, something like that. It's a very fun and rewarding deck to get good with as well. But so with that out of the way, I want to show you a lot of combos if you're unfamiliar with this deck or unfamiliar with the modern way it plays that you need to be familiar with you need to know what elder conahawk does now you need to know what elder rampangu does both instances of what that one does because that's what's affected by ulti conahawk being at three and you need to know what these win combos are because the win combos are really really nice all right, so I'm going to be going through these combos rather fast. I'm going to be using YGO Pro replays that I made previously for almost all of them, and they'll be going through pretty quickly because I've got a lot of ground to cover. I've got a lot of combos to cover. But because it's a Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro replay, you should be able to, you know, go back and see what I did in certain areas. But anyway, the basic Elder Conahawk combo now ends on two Steed Searches, ends on Ulti Conahawk and Ulti Kimun Falco. So the sequencing for how you do that is Normal Summoning Elder, Elder Effect, Normal Summoning the Conahawk, Conahawking for Rampangu, making Ulti Conahawk with your Elder and your Conahawk. Then you make the Conahawk target two of your dudes, and then you tag it out for Elder and Rampangu, sending the Normal Conahawk to your graveyard. And you get to search Ritual Beast Tamer Lore. You can search Zephyrm Pilika here as well, it just has to be one of the ones that revives from Graveyard. Laura is typically better, but if you already opened one of these cards, like Pilika, Oracle, Zephra, or opened the Laura, you just get to search a Steeds instead here. So you get to search extra copies of Traps. Because we're just searching this because this is needed for the combo, but if you already open this in conjunction with Elder Conahawk, it just means you search another Trap instead. But anyway, so you Rampangu effect, banish an Apaleo, sending an Apaleo from deck to Grave, you uh, link your Elder and your Rampangu off into Ulti Kimun Falcos, which allows you an additional Normal Summon by banishing your Ritual Beast from your grave. You're going to banish the Apaleo we just sent. You're going to Normal Summon the Laura using the additional Normal Summon that Kimun Falcos gives you. Laura's effect is going to activate, bringing back the Conahawk we sent with the first Ulti Conahawk effect. Then you get to use Conahawk. You're going to banish Winda from your deck. So we're getting a lot of names in circulation. We're getting three Tamer names and three Beast names in circulation. And then you get to go Laura and Conahawk into Ulti Conahawk. And at this point, you have the Laura that has not been specialed, the Winda, and the Apaleo that have not been specialed yet. And so you get to use the Conahawk, targeting two, tagging it out, summoning Apaleo and Alora, sending just one of the cards you can't summon. So in this case, the guy Apaleo that we sent off of Rampangu, searching our first steeds. Apaleo gets to Graveyard Manage, just banishing a card. And then we get to make Ulti Conahawk again, sending two cards to Grave, getting a second copy of steeds. So now we have three cards banished, one of them being a Paleo, one of them being Window, which means Window is a good card to end on when we tag out our Conahawk on the opponent's turn, because we will be able to, you know, float with it. And then also the Apaleo will be putting another name back in our Banish pool, meaning that the Ulti Kimun Falcos effectively functions like Ambush that we would previously end on. Because previous combos you'd end on Steed's Ambush, so that you could tag out your fusion on your opponent's turn, summon two dudes, and then ambush for two more dudes, so you can pop four with steeds. But in this instance, in these modern combos, your ambush literally is a monster on the board because Ulti Kimun Falcos is an extender, and it just chills on your board during most of the combos. So, 
You're able to tag out the Conahawk for the Winda and the Apaleo. The Apaleo banishes another name, so now you have two banished. And then you get to tag out the Kimon Falcos for the two names that are banished. So now you're at four dudes on the board. You're able to start your next turn with a lot of options for play, and you have access to double steeds, right? So you have access to double steeds. You're able to pop your opponent's board for up to four twice. Uh, and so it's very, very good for play. And then it also has another layer of protection like built into it because of Winda being a floater. So they can't just kill this and expect it to like do nothing. You have a card on your board that is a Ritual Beast name that is also capable of floating into fusions, cards from your main deck that are names you're missing, whatever. Okay, so this is the first Elder Ram Pangu combo, and this is the way you do it if you only have access to one ulti Conahawk. This is the old way we were doing it. Uh, this is what I'm just gonna let play, uh, and I'm just gonna basically talk about what matters and uh, like when it comes up. Basically, you Elder for Rampangu, Rampangu for Apaleo, sending Apaleo. You make the ulti Conahawk and you send uh, your dude, uh, your Apaleo, and summon uh, the Elder and Rampangu back, and you're gonna add Conahawk off of the add. And then you link away into Kimon Falcos, and your Kimon Falcos gets to banish Apaleo to normal summon the Conahawk. So you get Conahawk at circulation. Uh, which is something you can't do if you've, like, extravagant two uh, of your um, uh, ulti Conahawks away. You can't do that with a Rampango effect, basically. But so, Conahawk effect banishes a Tamer from your deck, in this case, Laura. Your Kimon Falcos tags out for the Apaleo and the Tamer, and then you're able to banish Winda from your grave that we sent off of another Rampangu, and then you're able to just get your searches, right? So, this, like, if you can watch it a few times and, like, understand it. I understand there's a lot of stuff moving around, but if you understand, like, the fundamentals of how Ritual Beast deck works, like, it's, it's easy for you to see, like, how, like, those cards are getting targeted and stuff like that. But so this is if you only have access to one ulti Conahawk in your extra deck. This is literally the only combo that gets affected by ulti Conahawk being at three. Because normally, you'd end on a Kimon Falcos here if you have multiple copies of ulti Conahawk, which is the next combo I'll show you. But this is still a good combo to end on. You end on double steeds that you search. Uh, you end on the ulti Conahawk that can tag out on the opponent's turn for window and Conahawk. You can steeds your opponent for three twice. Uh, and the Apaleo is good for graveyard management and all that sort of stuff. So this is the old way to do it, and this is the way you still need to know how to do it if you you know, are playing the Extravagance version. Because if you're playing the Extravagance version and you hit one of those 34% chances of banishing two of your ulti Conahawks, then if you opened Elder Rampangu, this is the combo you need to perform. So it is a combo you still need to know, but it's a combo you, that you will not be doing often. But so what I'm going to show you now is the new version of Elder Rampangu with access to multiple ulti Conahawks, and you will see the change. This one is Elder, Summon Rampangu, Rampangu Effect, Banish, Ulti Conahawk, Send Conahawk, Tag into another Ulti Conahawk, Target 2, Tag out, Summon the Elder and Rampangu again, Sending the Fusion to the Graveyard to add Laura, Your Rampangu Effect for Gaia Pelio, Sending Winda, Kimon Falcos gets made, You banish the Winda, You Normal Summon the Laura, And now you can normal su uh, you can Special Summon the uh, Conahawk from your Grave off the Laura, Banishing a Paleo, so now you have an extra tamer name in play, uh, and you also have more cards on the board at any given time. You did not have to tag out the ulti Kimun Falcos, so it keeps your board presence a bit more concise. So now you get to just go through your Conahawk searches, getting double steeds again, but instead of ending on a random Apaleo here, you have a Kimun Falcos here now. And you're able to tag out for Apaleo and Winda. Apaleo is able to banish a Conahawk from your grave, and then you're able to tag out Kimun Falcos on the opponent's turn for Conahawk and Laura, so you're able to steeds them twice for four again. So like, it is strictly better, but it's only like a marginal improvement, but it is strictly better, so this is the new way that Elder Conahawk is performed, that is the only combo that changed because of Ulti Conahawk going back to three. Like I said, this is going by a bit quick, a bit quicker than I would like, but I've got a lot of things I'm trying to cover, so if it's not something you're like understanding uh, the first time, then just like, Rewatch the replay in slow motion like just see where the stuff's going. Uh, it's actually very simple uh, Once you understand where the moving parts are moving to but anyway now this last combo I'm gonna do live. This is one of the win combos This is the best combo that I can perform now It is a three card combo and is elder conahawk or rampangu plus win and it's not even just these three cards as an opener uh, It could be elder conahawk or rampangu one of those three plus win as your second card and then the card you have as the discard for win just needs to be any Ritual Beast in the game that you play as long as it is not a duplicate 
of the first card you had. So if you have Elder plus Win, the third card you have cannot be another Elder. But it can be any Tamer, it can be any Beast. It'll get the name in circulation, search for your Conahawk or your Elder, whatever you're missing from the piece, and then you could play. But if you open Elder Conahawk or you open Elder Rampangu, you're able to use the win as an extender uh, later in the combo rather than using it in your opening hand to fix. But like the same combo is done regardless of what you open, as long as you open either Elder Conahawk Rampangu as one of, as your first card, one of those three cards as your first card, win as your second card, and then any non-duplicate Ritual Beast monster as your third card. Uh, but they all funnel into the same sort of play. So I'm gonna do this one live just so it's like a bit easier to follow. But so this. You will normal summon Elder, you'll normal summon Kanahawk, you'll use Kanahawk effect, banish the uh, Rampangu from your deck, and then you are going to make the Ulti uh, Kanahawk, and you're going to use these two for Ulti Kanahawk, activate Ulti Kanahawk's effect, targeting two, I target Elder and Kanahawk here, and then I chain the tag out effect for Elder and Rampangu. Right? So these get summoned. And then the Conahawk goes to Grave, and in this instance, if you don't have access to a Paleo yet, you search a Paleo. Uh, you can search a Paleo or a Tamer, like it doesn't matter, you just have to you have to make sure you have a Paleo and a Tamer in your graveyard at the point that you're making Ulti Q Moon Falcos, right? So like in this instance, you're going to use the uh, uh, Rampangu to banish one of your Guy Paleos or Q Moon Falcoses to send a Tamer if you didn't have access to it, if you added it, or you send a Paleo there, doesn't matter. But so now we're able to use Win as our extender, discarding a Paleo, getting an extra name in circulation, and then we're able to search for Pilika, the card, the type of card we would normally search. We would normally search like Laura or whatever in the standard combos, but now with Win, we're able to search a card we specifically discard with Win. Or if you open Win, then like you just, you course correct, you make sure you get the right names in circulation. But so now you make a Kimon Falcos with these two, Use Kimon Falcos. That was our first search, by the way, uh, with uh, Ulti Conahawk. And then our second search was with, with Win. This combo searches five cards total in terms of like how many cards you add from deck to hand. We're going to end on three traps uh, after this point. But so you Ulti Kimon Falcos effect. You're going to banish the Apaleo that is in your grave. You're going to normal summon the Zephyr Pilica that you added off Win. You're going to use Zephyr Pilica's effect to special summon the Conahawk. And then you're going to use the Conahawk effect to banish another Tamer from our deck. In this case, Usually I just banish the worst one, which is win. Um, and then from here, you are able to make Ulti Conahawk again. And at this point, you have Winda in your graveyard still that has not been specialed. You have the win and the Apaleo and the Pilika that have not been specialed yet. So you have four names that haven't been specialed at this point. So you're able to go Ulti Conahawk, target two cards, target a card you can't summon and the Apaleo, and then chain the tag out of Ulti Conahawk. And you're able to go into Pilika or win, doesn't matter in this instance. The important part is a Paleo, and you summon these two cards, and then you get to add Steeds. So, first of three traps that are being searched in this combo, and then a Paleo will use its effect, and you're going to banish the Winda, or the Tamer, that's in your grave, uh, if it's not Winda, that has not been summoned yet. Whatever card in your grave hasn't been summoned yet, it should be a Tamer at this point. You do that. But so... There's a lot of varying uh, like variables about this uh, combo, but it all funnels towards the same groupings of cards that you can uh, find. But, so, from here, you're going to use the Conahawk effect again, and you're going to target, again, a card you cannot summon, so Conahawk, and then a card you can summon, so Winda, in this instance, and then you're going to chain the Tag Out effect again, and we're going to summon Win and Winda, the last two summonable cards. And so, summoning these, Sending two to Grave, or sending one to Grave, the Conahawk, searching Steeds, and then we're going to make uh, Ulti Conahawk again, one last time. Now, also of note is that you could make Ulti Guy Paleo here if you wanted to, and you've searched two cards, so you have two negates. Um, I don't think that's ideal, considering this is a three-card combo. It'd be a three-card combo to make Ulti Guy Paleo have two negates, have no follow-up plan, and the other two cards in your hand would have to be, like, uh, cards that carry you, like, harder than anything, el like, anything else could carry you. But... I mean, you, you could think, you could do it. You you could. It's not out of the question. It's just not something that I would do. What I would do is make Ulti Conahawk again and use Ulti Conahawk's effect here. And this time, send just uh, two that are not Winda and Apaleo, so that those are the last two you have banished. And this time, we will add an Ambush. This is one of those instances where Ambush comes up because we only have two banished, meaning when we summon this Apaleo, we'll only have one banished. 
uh, after we summon those two off Conahawk. So it's uh, it's one of those instances where uh, Ambush actually just makes your board a little bit better. But you've got two Steeds, Ambush. This can tag out on your opponent's turn for these two cards that can be summoned, you know, onto your board to complement your Key Moon Falcos. You have two Steeds, and you can Ambush your opponent uh, with the Steeds and pop up to five monsters twice. So, like, it just it works out really, really, really well. Because opponent's turn, it's very simple. Uh, you use this to summon your Winda and your Apaleo. The Apaleo can do graveyard control, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's not, like, important. Um, and you can just do Ambush and get the uh, Tamer of your choice. Elder is, like, the least offensive, I guess, smile. Um, and get your Conahog back. So you can have, like, this sort of board in conjunction with your Steedses. You can deal with a lot of monsters this way. Uh, not very many combo decks I know of can play through multiple Steeds. Like, even Admancipator will struggle with this kind of nonsense. Like, the only card that protects them from Steeds outright is Block Dragon. Uh, but if you're just, like, Steedsing, like, multiple cards off their board multiple times, and then they have to deal with other cards you have access to, like, they're not going to be able to beat you. Uh, so, this is, the, this is the gist. This is the best combo. And like I said, this combo is multiple ways to be opened. Uh, like, Elder, Rampangu, Conahawk... Any one of those cards win, and any Ritual Beast that isn't a duplicate in your hand is this combo. It just You structure it a little bit differently uh, in terms of how you're accessing the cards. But you get to specific points, and it should make sense if you start actually playtesting the deck. But basically, that's kind of all like that's changed. Ritual Beast is kind of nice. And then there's also the combos where you can open like Win plus Conahawk, where... You don't have anything else, and your win discarding Conahawk, adding Pilika, normally Pilika reviving Conahawk, and that's just like one Steeds and Kimon Falcos and Conahawk. So it's like it still gets you to a Steeds and still functions like an ambush play. Uh, so it's actually like really, really good. Like the deck plays a lot more hands out now than it's ever played before. Uh, you have the capability of playing the Brain Research Lab, the Terraforming, and Oracle of Zephyra. Um, engine like you have access to all those types of things for those of you that are interested this is a sample deck list this is what i've been playing around with this isn't a deck list that i've fully refined yet but this is what i've been playing with the most uh in terms of like testing hands and doing stuff like that uh win is obviously a three of you could choose to not play the field spell package but i personally really enjoy it um you could make cuts here or there for differing things to allow the deck to play more back row play more traps um, and stuff like that. Uh, one of the big cards that this deck has access to is Nibiru. This deck plays Nibiru better than anything else because once your opponent has summoned five times, you can uh, go chain link one, uh, tag out your fusion monster and your Kimon Falcos if that's on board, and then chain link two Nibiru that'll tribute your opponent's board and not yours because your uh, card effects haven't resolved yet. Your fusions are off the board, but they haven't summoned the guys yet. And then they contribute the entire opponent's board, summon the Nibiru, summon the token, uh, and then your uh, your little dudes will pop out from your Fusion and your Kimon Falcos tag out as Chain Link 1 after the Nibiru resolves and summons itself. Uh, so, like, there's a lot of different little nuanced things that you can do with this deck. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do as far as play. Deck has access to a lot of really good cards like Dimension Shifter, DeFi, and Macrocosmos. Uh, so, basically... Maybe this video has been a bit rambly, maybe this video has been a bit hard to follow, but man, I love this deck, and I definitely think you should give it a try. So, with that out of the way, and without like anything else I can think of to talk about right now to extend this video any further than it already is, the video is a lot longer than I wanted it to be, I'm sure. If you enjoyed this, make sure to subscribe. If you liked the video, drop a like on it. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, leave them in the comments down below. And like, that's it, basically. Subscribe if you want to. If not, man, I'm sad. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching as usual. Thanks for your time as always, and take care. I will see you in the next video.